Hey everyone, uh, Pete here again, and I know it's been a little while, but I have another quick video I wanted to put out. Um, some some cool stuff happening with object lists with this latest update, and I wanted to share share that out. Um, so wanted to talk a little bit about object lists. I, I already had a video that covered some of the more basic stuff. So I'm not gonna go into all of that, but did wanna talk about essentially some of the object lists that can be larger. Um, what, I've, what I've noticed, so right now with the way scripting is, you have to try and do whatever you need to do in the least number of nodes possible. Um, there's something like a 512 node cap uh, so if you have more than that, it ends up basically just giving you that dedicated server error. Um, at least that's what I'm hearing. I've I've run into the server error before, so I know it's a thing, but I, I'm pretty sure that it's like around 512 that nodes that, that cause that. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with lists, especially using loops and kind of looping through them and having everything in the list do something. Um, I've got another video that talks about loops, but um, let me show you a couple examples of some lists. So this is a script that I had made that needed a lot of objects to be in a list. This is one way to do it, but notice there's like a million nodes, okay? So you can do four nodes in an object list. You can combine an object list. So these two put together eight and so on. You get the drill. I think this is like 48, but it takes like, I don't know, 50, 50 to 60 nodes just to put it all into one object list. So that is, it's doable. And, and normally I would recommend this for a shorter list of objects. Um, that said, in the current environment, this is really not optimal because it takes up a huge chunk of your node budget. And it's also tedious to, click everything together. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So let me show you a couple other options for node lists. Um, one of them is getting objects in the area monitor. Uh, this one I've heard has been having some issues. There's uh, some people have put out some videos saying that there's bugs with this. It is an option, but I would just be aware of that, that it can have issues. So what this would do is we have three dynamic objects within the list or within the area monitor. And here on the node graph, if we were to plug that get objects in area monitor in here, um, what this is gonna do is it's going to randomly place these objects throughout the map uh, area once we run the map. So. Let's, let's run it and see if those three objects pop up. Yep, there they are. So we got one, two, assuming the third one's over here. Okay, yep. So it did work. That part wasn't bugged. So um, that's pretty cool. That's one way. So you could fill that area monitor, make it bigger, throw like a ton of objects in there. Um, I think the object lists can go up to 120 if I remember right. Um, so you, you could get a lot of objects into a list and manipulate them easily with that. All right, let's, let's look at another option. Okay. So this one, sorry, I've got to get back over here. You can also do a node that's get objects in prefab. So I have a prefab of these three objects here and let's go ahead and connect our prefab. Now these are gonna be the bigger mounds of, oh, I need to grab the node, okay. So when you're in the in the browser, it's under objects, this is pretty much where anything related to lists is gonna be found. So I, I will, I'm not gonna go into this in this video, but get all spawn points and get all spawn points for team are another way that we can do 
uh, create a list really quickly with like one node. Um, obviously that's specific to spawn points, but for like mini games and things like that, where you're changing up spawns or activating, deactivating things, um, that can be helpful. So down here, closer to the bottom of the list, you've got get objects in area monitor. That's the one we just covered. Get objects in prefab. And then we'll we'll talk about this one in a minute, but it's get objects by label, which is my new favorite, and I'll I'll show you why. So get objects in prefab. What I've noticed with this one is you tend to have less buggy issues if the the pre if what you're gonna do with the objects is not like moving them around. Um, an example of this is I made a track for a, a map that's going to release here pretty soon. It's a terminal remake from Halo 2. And the track is just like 50 pointers. They don't move anywhere. They're just sitting there. But I was able to get them all into the list with one node versus, or sorry, into the graph with one node in a, in a list form instead of adding the individual pointers so super helpful. Let's, let's see if this one works or if we run into a bug, but we've, we should have those three blocks. Okay, they, they came in perfectly as well. So um, again, do what's best for you. Try it out. If you run into issues, you know, I guess I warned you on some of these, but um, let's let's show this new one that I believe it's this last update that this became possible. And it makes it super easy. Um, all of these objects right here, so I have a ton of them. These I have set a label for. So when they're, they have to be dynamic, and then you can see the labels option. You come in here, they've added some of the labels that I think were just like missing or, I don't know, they didn't work before. Um, but you can add these like mini game objects, one through five, and if you go down to the bottom, there's these user alpha, bravo, charlie, all the way down. So there's a lot of different labels you can use, like 30 of them, roughly, that you can set for different things. And then you can grab a list of all of those objects with a single node. So this one right here, get objects by label. I just chose minigame object one, which is the label I chose for all of those objects and it's going to put them all into a list with one node and now when we run our map this this map i actually have it where it's basically like a dynamically changing every game layout of this little arena so you notice how it just put everything in took that one node to get them all into one place and if i run it again it's going to look completely different. So pretty cool. Um, for anyone still watching this, this arena I've made is a mini game where basically you, you have a hammer. You can't damage anyone unless you grab one of these skulls. It like powers you up for a few seconds and then you can actually hit people and kill people. It's a fun little game I was using, uh, messing around with, um, collectibles and, and trying to create a, a list framework for collectibles that would be easy for people to use. But anyway, um, that's all I really wanted to cover. Hopefully you got something out of the, the new list options. And um, as always, feel free to you know leave comments if you have questions. I'll do my best to respond and help you out. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Take care.